high drama and momentous events in the current historic session of the United Nations. For the third time, Nikita Khrushchev takes the stand to repeat his demands for the admission of Red China, the drastic reorganization of the World Body Secretariat, and the resignation of Secretary General Doug Hamashold. Speaking in measured tones that are the more convincing for the contrast with his previous angry outbursts, Khrushchev threatens that if his demands are not met, the Red Bloc will bypass the United Nations, a hint that the Soviet might directly intervene in the Congo, disregarding United Nations peace efforts there. Calmly and deliberately, Khrushchev opens the day with a calculated expression of one of the hardest Soviet lines yet voiced. The audience of world leaders next hears King Hussein of Jordan speak as the leader of a small nation in full support of Hamishold and the United Nations, concluding with a forceful warning to the newly independent member states. We do not forget our long struggle for liberation, nor could we support existing injustices being committed by some members of the free world. But in the setting sun of the old imperialism, we are not blinded to the new imperialism of communism, one far more brutal, far more tyrannical, and far more dangerous to the ideals of free people, to the concept of nationalism, than this world has ever known. <laughs> concept of nationalism than this world has ever known. Indian Prime Minister Nehru next goes to the rostrum. Bearing the greatest prestige among the leaders of the nucleus nations, Mr. Nehru opposes the Russian demands to drastically revise the United Nations organization. Says Nehru, the world organization has amply justified its existence. A high point of his address is an eloquent appeal for peace. Seated here in this tremendous and impressive city of New York, with all the achievements of modern science and technology and human effort, my mind often goes back to our villages in India and my countrymen who live there. We have no desire to imitate or compete with any other country but we are firmly resolved to raise the standards of our people and give them the opportunities to lead a good life. Even though this fills our minds, I do not propose to speak to you on this subject here because there is something else that is of even greater importance. That is peace. Without peace, all our dreams vanish and are reduced to ashes. The planted speech concludes a morning session with the world still uncertain as to the effect of Khrushchev's renewed attack on Hamishol. That same day, the Secretary General takes the microphone in a stirring reply to Khrushchev's demand that he muster up the courage to resign. The statement this morning seems to indicate that the Soviet Union finds it impossible to work with the present Secretary General. This may seem to provide a strong reason why I should resign. However, the Soviet Union has also made it clear that if the present Secretary General were to resign now, they would not wish to elect a new incumbent, but insist on an arrangement which, and this is my firm conviction based on broad experience, would make it impossible to maintain an effective executive. By resigning, I would therefore, at the present difficult and dangerous juncture, throw the organization to the winds. I have no right to do so, because I have a responsibility to all those states members for which the organization is of decisive importance, a responsibility which overrides all other considerations.
shall remain in my post during the term of office as a servant of the organization in the interest in the interest of all those other nations as long as they wish me to do so. In this context, the representative of the Soviet Union spoke of courage. It is very easy to resign. It is not so easy to stay on. It is very easy to bow to the wish of a big power. It is another matter to resist. As is well known to all members of this assembly, I have done so before on many occasions and in many directions. If it is the wish of those nations who see in the organization their best protection in the present world, I shall do so again.